Hello again everyone, and today I'm covering yet another classic Nikon G-type lens, this time the AFS VR Micro Nikkor 105mm f2.8 GIFED. If you own a Nikon digital SLR camera, full frame or APS-C, or a mirrorless Nikon Z type camera and the FTZ adapter, then this classic lens is probably one of the first macro options you would want to consider. It costs 800 US dollars or 650 pounds here in the UK, a slightly expensive price but still reasonable if the lens turns out to be any good. It's one of your classic dual purpose 100mm or thereabouts macro lenses, especially designed to get one to one magnification images of very small subjects, while also being very suitable for use as a portrait lens at normal distances or at close distances to someone with a very small head, I suppose. On a full frame camera, that maximum aperture of f2.8 could give you some really nicely out of focus backgrounds, and shooting close up with macro lenses is a fun and creative way to spend any rainy afternoon. What helps is that, as well as having autofocus, this lens is image stabilised. Here's the image stabilisation at work at normal magnification. As you can see, it's hardly rock steady, but it is helping a lot. And as usual, for an image stabilisation system, it's much less efficient at close distances. Here's some macro footage with it turned off, and now turned on. As you can see, it only makes a small difference when shooting close up, but every little helps. Let's take a look at the lens's build quality. It's a little chunky looking, weighing in at 720 grams. Its body is metallic and feels very tough and well made. It's based on a metal lens mount, which is edged with a weather sealing gasket. Then you get a series of buttons for controlling the autofocus and image stabilisation. Then comes the rubberized focus ring, which turns smoothly and relatively precisely. You can turn it at any time. In common with a lot of macro lenses, when you change focus, you're treated to an astonishing amount of focus breathing. Video makers will find that irritating. The autofocus motor works reasonably quickly and accurately, making a gentle whooshing noise. The lens has a 62mm filter thread and comes with a pretty deep lens hood. Overall, the build quality is excellent really, although you can tell that the image stabilisation system is getting a bit old now. This lens was first marketed in 2006 after all, so it's getting on. Alright, let's see about image quality. I'm testing it out by adapting it onto my Nikon Z7 with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor. Let's start with normal focus distances. At f2.8, sharpness in the middle of the image is really impressive, although contrast is a little low. Over in the image corners, we begin to see some softness, but image quality is just about keeping it together. Let's stop down to f4. Image quality remains about the same in the corners, but the picture in the middle looks a bit punchier. At f5.6, we finally see completely perfect quality in the middle. The corners are still lagging behind a little though, and really, image quality stays the same now, down to f11. Stop down any further than that, and the image will just start to get softer, from the effects of diffraction. So, overall, it's a good performance on a high resolution full frame camera, but not great. I have seen macro lenses with sharper corners and better contrast than this. You'd have to be quite a serious pixel peeper to really complain about it though. Well, let's take some test pictures on that camera's APS-C mode, where we get a 20 megapixel cropped image, so anyone with a 20 megapixel APS-C camera will find this bit useful. At f2.8, we continue to see great sharpness, but slightly reduced contrast. You can also see some moiré patterning from the Z7's image sensor on the horizontal lines there. The good news though, is that the image corners look pretty spectacular, that's a nice surprise. F4 looks about the same in the corners, more or less perfect, and the middle has picked up in contrast now too. You can stop down the lens further than this if you want, of course, but it doesn't get any sharper, and at F16, the image begins to get noticeably soft from the effects of diffraction. Still, it's a brilliant performance if you're using an APS-C camera. Alright, let's switch back to full frame mode and look at the close-up image quality. 
At the closest focus distance, macro image quality is actually a little soft and ghostly at f2.8, which I wasn't expecting to see. There's a bit more contrast at f4, but it's only at f5.6 that we really see impressive sharpness and contrast, and f8 looks a little better again. At f11, the image is beginning to soften again due to the effect of diffraction. So at macro distances, you should really stop the lens down between f5.6 and f11 for best results. Let's take a look now at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. It's a typical performance for this kind of lens here. We see a negligible level of barrel distortion and some notable vignetting at f2.8. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 to see that vignetting reduced and the corners brighten up. Next, let's see how the lens performs against bright light. We're treated to quite a drop in contrast here and quite a lot of flaring, so you'll want to keep your lens's hood quite firmly attached. Still, that kind of performance is not out of the ordinary for a macro lens, I'm afraid. Let's now take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. At f2.8, you can get some nicely out of focus backgrounds here. Generally, they look quite nice and smooth, with little in the way of ugly highlighting, so no serious problems at all here. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. That's a bit of an issue with this lens. Here you can see some strong pink and green tinting to bokeh highlights. Even stop down to f5.6 it remains there, although it is reduced at f8. Well, what can we say overall? This macro lens is about 14 years old, and it's starting to show its age a little now. Newer macro lenses are a little sharper, and some can handle chromatic aberration quite a bit better. And I was surprised to see softness in close-up image quality when your aperture is wider than f5.6. Having said that though, it's still a lens that gets plenty right. Stop the aperture down, and the image quality is plenty sharp and punchy, its bokeh is quite smooth, and its nice build quality and image stabilisation make it genuinely enjoyable to use. It's not a cheap lens, but neither is it overpriced, so I can fairly happily recommend it. Just remember that other companies like Tamron, Sigma and Venus Optics are out there too, making newer, perhaps better, and certainly much less expensive options for you to consider.